Yes, there, there is serious criminal activity going on that ultimately must be rooted out. It became very clear to me that, you know, you kind of had a tiger by the tail here and that this was serious. For a moment, Dr. Greer considered shutting everything down. He had been threatened and swindled far too many times. Sherry was gone. He had no office, no staff, no money. Back in 1998, I was given information by a friend that Dr. Greer was having a conference. Literally the month that Sherry Adamek passed away, within 30 days, I have this scheduled event. So I went to the conference and learned some things and listened. And so she just on a lark came and she's an emergency doctor like I am. And what really grabbed my attention was he was getting all this information from military witnesses. That was in 1998. By 2000, when we were planning and storyboarding and working the whole disclosure project event out and pulling together all these hundreds of witnesses, um, we uh, didn't really have the funding to do it. But she got so in supportive and involved that she lived very modestly and took all of her excess income and donated it. And I want to acknowledge some amazing people that are here. Dr. Jan Bravo, without whom we would not have the Disclosure Project. But it's not just the funding she's provided, it's the moral support and the encouragement and the friendship. And, and so she's just become a very key person. And, I, you know, it's sort of metaphysical and odd that literally the month that Sherry Adamek passed away, within 30 days, I have this scheduled event. Not alone anymore, with the support of a loyal team, Dr. Greer grew his witness list from a couple dozen to over 200. And see that little... The little dot right there, that dot don't belong there. They said, I'm one of those what you would call the high government officials in the FAA. I was the division chief. Uh, there was only three or four down from the Admiral. I was awarded the Air Force Guided Missile Insignia. I was the first photographic officer in the Air Force to get the, they called it the missile badge. So uh, well, I forgot who it was that called, but he says we got a problem here. What's the problem? He says, well, it's that UFO. We weren't launching real nuclear weapons. We were launching dummy warheads. They were the exact size, shape, and dimension, and weight. And we were looking down southwest, and the missile popped up through the fog. It was just beautiful. And I hollered, there it is. And our guys on our M45 tracking mount with 180 inch lenses on it got it. We sent the film back down to, to, to Vandenberg. The Japanese uh, airline 747 was coming from the Northwest going across uh, the Alaskan uh, territory. He called and asked the controller if the controller had any traffic at his uh, altitude. His radar is picking up uh, a target. He sees this target with his, uh, with his eye, and the target, the way he described it, a huge ball with uh, lights running around it, and uh, I think he said it was like four times as big as a 747. I was called into Major, Major Mansman's office at the 1st Strategic Aerospace Division headquarters. And uh, Major Mansman said, watch this. There was the launch from a day or two before it at, uh, at Big Sur. We watched that stage burn out. We watched the second stage burn out. We watched the third stage burn out. And it's going like this. And into the frame came something else. It flew into the frame like this. And it shot a beam of light at the warhead. Fires another beam of light. Goes around like this. We're going like this, fires another beam of light, goes down like this, fires another beam of light, and then flies out the way it came in. And the warhead tumbles out of, the, out of space. 
They brought in uh, three people from the FBI, three people from the CIA, and three people from Reagan's scientific uh, study team, and I don't know who the rest of the people were. When they got done, they t actually swore all these other guys into uh, uh, the, this never took place. Who said that? Who was saying? This was uh, one of the guys from the uh, CIA. <clears throat> now I saw that. I don't give a goddamn what anybody else says about it. I saw that on film. Phil Klass can kiss my ass. He wasn't there. I was. He said this is the first time they ever had 30 minutes of radar data on a UFO. He said, you are never to speak of this again. As far as you're concerned, this never happened. So I said, yes, sir, and walked out. And that was the last I talked about it for 18 years. the original uh, video that uh, I took, and I had the uh, pilot's uh, uh, report, and I had the FAA's uh, uh, first report that was all downstairs on my, uh, my table. They didn't ask for that, so I didn't give it to them. There are things that I know about that I did in the service that I won't talk about to you now because they're top secret, and I could get my ass in trouble for talking about them. If you parse what Major Mansman said, he said, you are to say, this never happened. Well, that's not classifying it top secret, is it? And I was a part of a United States Air Force cover-up for 18 years. But who do you tell that you were involved in a UFO incident without them looking at you like you ain't wrapped too tight? What we photographed up there affected me for the rest of my life and made a huge impact on my understanding of the universe and of governmental manipulation of, of our minds. Now, with the witnesses on his side, Dr. Greer had the firepower to attack Washington again. We are not alone. That's the message a group of pilots, scientists, and former government officials want Congress to hear. 21 members of that group already have testified in Washington for what's known as the Disclosure Project. And we had all volunteers who organized that whole event and there was no paid staff. So when people look at that whole period, we didn't, have a, we didn't have an office, a secretary, and one paid staff person, but we did it. Dr. Stephen Greer heads up the Disclosure Project, a group that compiles information from people who say they've encountered extraterrestrial forms of life. Uh, 20 years ago, in 1980, I was a security specialist assigned to RAF Bentwaters. Objects made incursions over our WSA, fired pencil-thin beams of light into them and adversely affected the ordnance, possibly. There were bodies that were involved with some of these crashes, also some were alive. What do members plan to do with their information? They hope Congress and President Bush take notice. We are asking for the U.S. Congress and for President Bush to move towards an official inquiry and disclosure on this subject. Those that don't want to believe you will never believe you anyway, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the truth. A spokesperson for the Senate Science, Technology, and Space Committee says no congressional hearings are planned right now. Elaine Quijano, CNN Headline News. I stand before you today in my almighty God, and I tell you this. If Congress calls me in and says, will you testify in detail what you know, I stand here today prepared and ready to do just that. Governments must never lie to the people. Thank you. The number of people Dr. Greer had managed to get behind him was monumental. In a perfect world, an event of this proportion, with that amount of coverage, would have been enough to start a legitimate movement. But of course, we hardly live in a perfect world. Nine Eleven became the mother of all news stories and completely changed the game for everyone. Fear, panic, and strife were imprinted in the public consciousness to what end? Not to go after Al-Qaeda, 
but rather to invade the sovereign nation of Iraq. Given such a drastically overt misstep on the part of a U.S. government led by an oil family, the question on some people's minds is whether or not this disaster was exploited, or worse, engineered. The Gulf of Tonkin and the Vietnam War, Chiang Kai-shek and the Korean War. False flag operations are nothing new. However, according to some, the ultimate card to play might be yet to come. How do you grow the trillion dollar military industrial complex that Eisenhower warned about into a two or three trillion dollar program. You gotta have a bigger enemy out there. Von Braun's purpose in life during the last years of his life, his dying years, was to educate the public and decision makers about space-based weapons. First the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. In 1977, I was at a meeting in Fairchild Industries, and in that room were a lot of charts on the walls with enemies, identified enemies, names that people had never heard of, names like Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi. But we were talking then about terrorists, the potential terrorists. No one had ever talked about this before. and they continued the conversation about how they were going to antagonize these enemies, and that at some point there was going to be a war in the Gulf. According to these theorists, after the military-industrial complex had its war against terrorism, the next enemy that Dr. Von Braun identified on Earth would be third world country fanatics. But with no more enemies left, the people would soon be taught to look to space. The next enemy was asteroids. Now at this point, he kind of chuckled the first time he said it. Asteroids against asteroids were going to build space-based weapons. So it was funny then. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over during the four years that I knew him, and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card and remember, Carol, all of it is a lie. 99% of all the information out in the public on this subject is well-crafted disinformation designed to scare people to support the next phase in global warfare. And this kind of corruption is why the only things that are being made on this subject are things that redound to paranoia and fear in the military-industrial complex. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. I don't think we're moving forward if we trade you know, factional and ideological war from one ethnic or religious or economic system into an interplanetary conflict, because that's A, not survivable, and B, would be even worse in terms of galvanizing the world around a military structure. That has been the central organizing principle of our society for a few thousand years, actually. It is hard to concretely prove that 9-11 was a false flag attack because the people behind it are so good at covering their tracks, especially with the compliance of the mainstream media. If you had trillions of dollars, you'd be pretty good at it too. The adversary is closer to home. It's the Pentagon bureaucracy. According to some estimates, we cannot track 2.3 trillion dollars in transactions. 2.3 trillion dollars in transactions. According to the Comptroller General of the United States, there are serious financial pro management problems at the Pentagon. Fiscal year 1999, 2.3 trillion missing. Fiscal year 2000, 1.1 trillion missing. And DOD is the number one reason why the government can't balance its checkbook. I would like for you to respond to the questions that I've put to you today. 